uh, Javon coming along. I know he said he had to get his legs back underneath him. Uh, do you feel that, that that's been making progress? Yeah, I think Javon, is, he's been doing a really nice job in there, just taking his time and really, you know, ramping himself back up. So he's the biggest emphasis for him has just been on his technique. And I feel like he's done a really nice job these past couple of days and going in and playing with low pads, you know, using his hands inside and making plays in the backfield. So he's doing really good of being focused on the small details of his job, which will allow him to be a very dominant player inside. He was pretty pumped up after one there. Was that a, was that a run stop, I think, that, that, that he was excited about? Yeah, there? for sure. He was a run stop in the backfield. He had, again, an excellent technique, which allows him to make plays. And that's the biggest thing for him now that he's he's feeling much better. Now it's just the emphasis on those techniques, which will allow him to be a dominant player. He keeps doing what he's doing. and you know, He's in a, a really good space. He's uh, bringing energy to our group. You know, he's physical. He's looking good out there in good shape, getting his legs back under him. And I'm excited to see him just continue to progress and looking forward to him having a big year for us because it would be really vital you know, for us to have really dominant players inside. You know, that's what helps our defense perform the way we perform is those inside players. So having Javon and having Eric inside would be huge for us. When you, you mentioned technique with him a lot, I would say is the pad level and him being in the past, anyway, him being too high, is that the I think that's one of the main points at any position, but especially inside interior D line. If you play too high, right, you're going to get drove out of there and they're going to reset the line of scrimmage from the offensive perspective. So we want guys attacking, knocking back, and resetting the line of scrimmage so we can force guys to get TFL. So if our interior guys are doing that, if they're playing low, they can do that. You play too high, you know, you don't have any power. You can't play with the power that you need if you're playing with high, and that's any position on the football field. Was there a teammate you had in front of you that was particularly good and maybe you would say, hey, look at this guy that he used to be to keep the ball? Yeah, a lot of good teammates. Fletcher Cox, J.J. Watt, those are two good ones that yeah, played in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're really great player, talented guys, but those guys, just like J.K., all those guys, they put in the work, you know, put in the work on their technique. And they're also just some things you can't coach. It's just, you know, God given ability for a lot of those guys. And JK definitely has it. Gary Hyder's been out there with the ones a lot. Does he look like he did before when he was here? Yeah, Kerry does. I, you know, it's, uh, it's so great to have Kerry. Just first and foremost, the guy that he is, the man that he is off the field. All right, he's just he's an unbelievable person, unbelievable teammate and leader, and carries a very, very smart player. Right? So he makes plays that you think he wouldn't make. He makes those plays just because he's very he's very smart out there. And the ability of what Kerry has is he can play in, he can play tackle, like he can move up and down the defensive line at any position, and he's smart enough to where he won't bust. And he's a guy who never makes mistakes inside, no matter where you put him. Yeah, he's always on it, and he's always leading that group and bringing guys along with him. Like a true veteran leader, like Kerry Hyder is the epitome of that. And we're excited to have him back. And I, he left us in 20 years, excited to have him back just for his leadership. Can you shed some light on your second-year defensive players and maybe who stands out among that group? Uh, second-year players, uh, I think. The one guy right now that stands out to me is uh, is Huff. I think Huff has been doing a, an excellent job you know, back in OTAs when we started. Even up until now, he's been doing a good job of just communicating much better. Right? Being in a safety position, we asked a lot of those guys to communicate and to run the show, making calls and making checks on the back end and making sure everybody is on the same page. So I think he's taking a step there with the communication of running the show. and still has a way to go. He's still getting better, but uh, I'm happy with the progress that he's made from the spring up until now. Is Yamador and Ambry, are they where you want them to be right now? I think with Demo and Ambry, with those guys, they're still learning, right? They're still learning, they're still, they're still growing, right? They have a lot of, to improve with their technique, 
right? They have to continue to show us that, they have to show their teammates that they are headed in the right direction. They are improving, right? And they, they are headed, or they are doing good things, but they still have improvements they'll need to keep bringing. You're going into your second year as a defensive coordinator. If you can go back a year ago, did you give any thought about coaching from the booth? And then how much more, uh, I guess, seasoned are you with the role being on the field as a DC for all places? Yeah, I think for me, naturally, just calling it as a player for 10 years, I've just, I've always been on the field. So I've never, I never thought about going, going up in the booth. And uh, so I, that's, I'm just more comfortable being down on the field being there to talk to the guys just face to face if something happens. So that's that's my comfort level and uh, I feel felt it went fairly well because we have I have good coaches up in the booth that uh, that helps me out. They're doing a great job of communicating. Coach Bullocks, all right, he does a really good job of communicating to me from the booth. So having good people around you helps and I, I'm happy to have those guys on our staff and be helping me out there. Uh, and just second year for me it's uh, it's been it's been fun, you know. Second year, just going through it a second time. I think it's just like with players, like that second year, you should be a little bit better. You should be a little more comfortable with what you're doing, understanding what's coming, understanding how to plan and prep better, put guys in better positions. So it's all about getting the reps for me. It's just like the players, get reps and you get better. So that's what, and I feel more comfortable doing it. But I'm always right, always trying to learn more, always trying to be. You know, the best that I can be in my job. Look at looking back to your first season, did you have a favorite game in retrospect as far as the chess match when you getting to call some of those plays going back and forth with other play callers? Uh, favorite. All the ones we won. Those are, <laughs> that will be a favorite. <laughs> now I think the uh, I think the favorite game my favorite games were the you know when it matters most, I think it's the playoff games. Those are the ones, you know, versus Dallas, Green Bay and even the Rams, unfortunately, we didn't close it out like we wanted to, but those are my favorite games. Just being in those, being in those moments with the guys that we have, those were just special moments that a lot of people dream of, a lot of people never even make it to the playoffs. You know, so it was just, it was a fun moment to be in the playoffs and to be, you know, have a successful group throughout the playoffs. So all of those will be, you know, moments I always remember. Like chatting with Just personal chatting. Hey, Debo is a Debo is a guy who he can talk to anyone. Right? He's a very personable guy. He's fun to be around. He brings great energy to our team, and I just just love uh, just talking to him. And it's not always boss. Most of the time, I'm talking to guys, it's about life, just off the field. You know, that's the things that matter most to me. Like what's going on with guys off the field? You know, how, how are the families, kids? How's all? How are all those things going? That's that's the important stuff. <laughs> Can you explain what it means to you to have a, a defensive line with a lot of depth that are all capable of, of getting in the game? Because like when DeForest Buckner first got here, as a rookie, I think he played like 99% of the snaps. How much does it mean to you to not have to do that? I think D-line depth is huge, right? Because that's, for me, that's the, that's the group that drives everything we do defensively. So we, we need as much depth as possible. And those are some of the guys who unfortunately go through a lot of, you know, nicks and bumps along the way during, throughout camp. So you want to have enough depth there to keep guys rolling. And you want to keep those guys fresh. That's the biggest thing. If you can rush the passer in waves, not just one guy or two guys, but if we can rush the passer in waves where guys are always fresh coming in, it gives us a competitive advantage. So having depth there is huge for our success. I think with the linebackers, it's just it's reflective of you know Coach Johnny Holland and Coach Nick Sorensen and just working with those guys you know day daily, just continuing to work the ball drills, work keys, work their eyes, like being in the proper position. It's just it's a credit to the coach and credit for to the players for putting in the work and going up and making plays. You know everyone gets excited when we execute and we make plays. So today guys had a, a really good practice. I feel the energy there because, you know, guys execute. And that, that, that does spark energy for everyone, the entire team. Take some more. Yeah, it seems like you guys have more like, capable NFL 
I think it's always a luxury when you have guys you know who are on your team, right, who are capable NFL players. So if it comes down to a tough decision, you know, you're, it's a tough decision to make, but you're happy to make a tough decision and not have that decision made before, you know, you even go through any games. So we still always, I've always learned in my few years of coaching here, is just you always just let it play out. And once we play the games and every, it all it always works itself out to the guys who should be here on our team will end up on our team and we'll get the, the best you know however many guys that is we need for our defensive line we'll have that the top guys that we want and the versatility part like you said is huge right if we have a guy who can move inside move outside can do multiple things and that gives that guy an advantage to be up on game day if the guy has special team value right the more you can do it's the better better chance you have of making it. Noticing your shirt and the 49ers staff wearing our Dwight Clark shirts, can you just talk about how nostalgic this franchise is? Yeah, I think, um, you know, growing up, like it's uh, watching NFL football growing up, the Niners were always that premier organization, right? They all felt like they were in the Super Bowl every year when we watched the Super Bowl. So being able to work for such a, a story franchise, just when you see guys, Montana Rice, right, Dwight Clark, uh, Brian Young, just so many guys I, I watched growing up, and uh, it's kind of take a step back and it's almost like a wild moment, like, oh, I can't believe I'm here, you know, working with the Niners. It's a special moment and it's, it's, a, it's an honor, it's a blessing to work for the Niners, just because of all the rich history that you have here. Not every NFL team is in that position to have you know, so many legends you know, to be a part of the organization. So it is a uh, special day to honor Dwight Clark and all he, all that he's done, all that he meant to the uh, 49er organization. Uh, it's uh, I'm honored to wear the shirt and, and represent him today. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.